Yo, yo, it's cool times. Gang, gang to my cats, up to all my ducks. It's your boy, the American Sniper, aka the Bradley Cooper of this whole NFT thing. Let me get my boy visuals by Pierre up here. He was gracious enough to co host this thing with me. Let me figure this uh, uh, thing out here. Yo, Pierre. He must get so sick of the yo Pierre shit. But uh yo, request um request to, to be a speaker, Pierre. Let me get you up here. Let me get my boy visuals by Pierre. He's got the fresh weather report. PFP on deck. Man, we got some cool crash test joyride profile pick. Man, they're showing out. Crash test joyride showing out, man. This community is strong. Oh, wait, I got to invite him as a co-host. Wait, let me, let me do that. Send co-host invite. All right, I just did that. Do that so he can add speakers. And we're just going to shoot this shit here. I want to talk to my boy, Visuals by Pierre first. Yo! Yer. What's goody? What's goody? Yer. What's goody? What's goody? Yo, so are you from New York originally? Or are you yeah. Like yeah, I'm from New York. Originally from Queens. And now I'm spending a lot more time in L.A., as it seems. Man, the weather's nice out here, isn't it? It's nice. I'm trying to skip winter for the rest of my life if I can. <laughs> I feel that. Right when I heard you say that you're, I was like, man, he's definitely a New Yorker. Um, all right. Well, got my boy visuals by Pierre up here as the co-host. Just give you guys a quick run through. Um we're going to have little lemon friends come on in like 20 minutes or something. That's crazy. Been a big fan of that project. Already see we got some little lemon friends in the crowd here. Shout out to y'all. Um, crash test joyride. Honestly, I'm going to bring this up again, but one of my favorite artists, I love listening to Ty Dolla Sign. And I saw him scoop up a crash test joyride the other day. And I was like, you know what? Let me let me take a look at this project. That was like the first time an influencer's actually like influenced me on an NFT project. Um, Cause I was like, man, he's, he's cool. Uh, I fuck with his vibe. Um, and then also crypto Ray Ray's we've got our do uh, my boy dose from crypto Ray Ray's is going to come on here, but I just, I kind of wanted to shoot the shit with visuals by Pierre for a bit. Cause I got to admit something guys. Can y'all, y'all, y'all can hear me, right? Y'all can hear me good. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm so slack on NFT photography. I mean, I know about the cute. I know about bored rabbits, bored cockroaches, all these different PFP projects. But I really am slacking on my photography game. The only only person I really know that I'm really tapped in with, of course, and a lot of people are, is Drifter Shoots, uh, where my vans go, hit like a 40 ETH floor the other day. And there's definitely a market for great photography in this NFT space. And I want to tell you guys something really cool about Web3 NFT space is like I actually met visuals by Pierre. I was calling Pierre from now on. Um, I met Pierre uh, at JPEG party. Um, what was that two weekends ago or something? Yeah, it was like two weekends ago. And I actually didn't even make the connection. I was already following him on Twitter, already a fan of his. But I didn't even make the connection, but it's like so cool. You you meet these like really dope creators and everyone's so friendly. And I, I already I got a, a good vibe from him and, and some of his boys. And um, I just I love that, man. It's like you can everyone's so approachable, whether it's in person or over DM. And uh, I wanted to have him co-host this with me. And um, yeah, bro, you anything you want to introduce nah, yourself I appreciate to, it. to the crowd a little yeah. bit? Yeah. What's going on, everyone? GMGM. GM. Uh, it's your boy Pierre here, uh, also known as Visuals by Pierre, photographer from New York City, and now uh, entering the crypto space oh, for about a year now. I made it a year probably in December when I finally minted my Genesis collection. You know, it took me a while to get to that point, but I'm very, very glad I did. I'm glad I immersed myself into, into the community out here. Uh, and like you said, like um, that feeling of like, you know, meeting someone that you know online and meeting them in person and knowing them that knowing that they have a good vibe is like probably one of the best things that to come out of like the NFT community because I, I come from Web Two. I was like early on Instagram, taking photos, running around the city and stuff like that. And 
the the photography community has pr- pretty much been like my biggest supporter throughout the years and so like now that we're entering this new this new world this new level of things um being able to carry on that community into the into this new space now is definitely like one of the things that i'm like most interested in doing yeah for sure bro i mean i gotta admit something to you if if i knew you had shot one of my favorite rappers j cole I would have fanboyed out at JPEG party. I would have been uh, annoying you with questions and <laughs> been like, yo, what's he like? How'd you get linked up with him? But, um, yeah, I, man. I, yeah. I mean, I don't want to like, you know, I want to hype you up so you don't have to like hype yourself up, but guys, yeah. Yeah. I my, suck at having myself up by the way. I'm yeah, terrible at self promotion. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, facts. I feel you. I mean, I I do a good job of hyping myself up, not going to lie. Uh, so I'm going to do it for you. I heard uh, that intro, so I'm like, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, in person, I think, you know, you met me in person. I, I got a very different on-screen, on-spaces persona uh, than maybe I am in, in real life. You know, I think i very down-to-earth person. But, um, guys, tap on to Visuals by Pierre, his account right now. Throw him a follow. He needs to get to 10K. He's sitting at eight. I mean, that's, that's, come on. Let's get him to 10K. Let's get that Let's K. Let's get it. There. Let's fucking get it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 well, you mentioned earlier about like just now, like getting into photography NFTs. Like, what do you think was holding you back from like fully diving in earlier? You know, I think, um, and to be totally transparent and honest, it's like, man, I, I've, I can go on Instagram and, and see great pictures. You know, uh, you mentioned Web 2. I feel like a lot of my favorite photographers were in Web 2, and I didn't feel the need I needed to collect that. And I wasn't sure if there were communities built around photography. Yeah, I feel you. I think the photography community is just now, like, dipping its toe into NFTs, and it's growing, like, exponentially every day. There's so many, many talented artists out there. Like you said, like, Drifter... You got Will Nichols who sells 100 palm trees, uh, Dave Krugman, like uh, Jay and Silva. Like these are all pe- a lot of them are all people that I kind of came up with in, you know, the whole Web2 photography scene. And so to see how they transition to this space is definitely gave like a blueprint and also like um, almost like a target point to where f- photography NFTs can actually go. And one thing that I personally l- thought that stood out with photography NFTs, especially when it comes to street photography in particular, is the fact that the value of them to me is exponential because these are literally documentarians of the world that we live in currently, right? We've seen what happened over the past two years with you know, the pandemic and how the world's kind of been on this fast track into the future. And then before you know it, like that street corner that you used to walk past is not going to be there anymore. It might, it might be a whole new sky uh, high rise. Or that's, that building might get torn down. Something else might be put there. Like, the city and the world is ever-changing. So, like, if anyone's out there documenting the world as is right now, I think there's a lot of value into it. Because later on, you might be able to have those things in history books, you know? For sure. Bro, I can't agree with you more. This is crazy. Because I I was in L.A. a couple weeks ago. I'm in Miami right now. I was in L.A. a couple weeks ago. And I hadn't been there since the pandemic. And everything I felt change like was ch- like changed around me like there were you know i walked on hollywood boulevard and it felt very dystopian like a bunch of shops had now been boarded up obviously the pandemic hit businesses hard different vibe from the people everyone had masks on yep same in yeah. new york yeah new york was like literally like i am legend like the movie it was like <laughs> verbatim the same the same spot i don't know if you guys yeah. remember that scene where will goes by the met life building and then he see he's looking um looking for his dog i believe and then he sees like the mannequin that's standing in the middle of that street like i remember riding my bike into traffic in the in the in the heart of quarantine with no traffic in the streets like this is something you could never really do in new york so like that shit was like kind of insane and epic and i have tons of photos from quarantine empty new york too do you have a dog too? Because you're talking about I am legend. Just like protect your dog at all costs, man. When the dog, <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you definitely need a dog at all costs. Honestly, I don't have a dog, but I might get one if I end up moving to LA. So let's see. Yeah, you definitely need a house dog. But I wanted to make a, a point about um, kind of the transformation in the cities that we live in. I 
was in my Uber uh, driving into the city a couple of weeks ago in Los Angeles. And I see these billboards and it's, you know, a lot of these Fairfax type brands, which, you know, cool, you know, these different pop-up type places, golf, all, you know, all these different uh, shops. But I'm thinking, man, this feels, I feel like I've already seen the future with web three and these billboards are still stuck in web one and web two. And I feel like in the, in a, just in a couple of years, our landscape will be completely different. There's going to be a Cool Cats storefront. Now, I'm not reporting that. I'm just saying in my mind, I see a Cool Cats storefront. I see visual billboards with, you know, Beeple's artwork or maybe photography by visuals by Pierre or maybe a weather report shop on Fairfax. Like, I feel like, man, like I already see the future with Web3 and this is why this space is so cool, man. Nah, I would 100% agree with you on that. Like, what Web3 kind of did was, like, speed up the transition of the old guard into the new guard. And like you said, like, a lot of this, the the staples that were on Fairfax or the stops that were in New York that closed down. And now they gave way to a whole new brands of whole new new talent and stuff like that. Like, I've seen, like, certain, like, stores that were, like, near and dear to me. Like, for, like, instance, like, uh, Respace, which is, like, staples... Uh, their, their flagship store at one point in time and then they end up closing down. It might have been, sorry, it's kind of loud out here. It might have been before the pandemic, but that same space is now occupied by a whole new brand. And so, like the, like I said, back to the, the point of like cities transitioning and, and forever transforming is like the way things are right now are only going to be like this for a short amount of time. You know, these moments are fleeting. And so now, like I said, the new brands going to be there, the new people's, like the billboards that you see like hanging up right now are probably all going to be replaced by digital screens. Like that's going to be like the most efficient thing to do. And the, <laughs> I'm just waiting for the city to start looking like Blade Runner, honestly. Like that's what I'm waiting for. Bro, Blade, Blade Runner is crazy because I think Blade Runner took place in like 2019. Like it came out in like 84 or something. It took place in 2019 and like, yeah, like, damn, I, I love that movie. I love that yeah, I can't believe you just said that. Yeah, I, f- I fuck with that movie a lot. I went to go see it in theaters a couple couple of years ago, and uh, I think LA had like a, a anniversary screening of it or something. But um, yeah, I mean, th- you're starting to see small signs of it. You see like Staples Center, which was like the house that Kobe Bryant built, is now Crypto.com Arena, and you Insane. see like you know FTX Arena in Miami, the house like D Wade built, my boy D Wade, Wade County. Like now it's FTX. Um, arena and that that's just the the very very beginning of like the web threeification of of our world but let me let me transition real quick um because i was going to bring this i was starting to bring this up and then we started just we got deep into i am legend with will smith but um how do you, so if you guys again if you're just listening you just popped on go go on to pierre's twitter account give him a follow right now um it's been a big week for you bro um but let's let's kind of go back a little bit before we talk about why your collection's kind of flying this week um how'd you get your start and then bring us up to the point where you're doing a shoot for j cole um well yeah um i guess my start kind of came in like i want to say like tail end of 2009 sorry i'm like in this warehouse district in fucking we LA. outside my, okay. my bad oh shit did you get rugged you good nah nah i'm still here just still beeping like od oh it, it's okay i can uh, you want- if, you, if you guys can hear me i'll keep rocking um but yeah i got my start like around i think i took photography in like 2008 i went to school with in fact ironically enough i went to school with j cole um, and then when I graduated, I kind of was uh, going there for TV and film. So I wanted to be like a film producer, TV producer and whatnot. And then I kind of fell into photography as a byproduct of wanting to get into film because I, you know, I purchased a DSLR camera so I could shoot like short films with my friends. And I was like, this is still a camera. So let me take some photos, too. So I would definitely go around the city taking photos here and there. I was still working nine to five at the time. And then. I ended up getting fired because I skipped out on work to help a homie shoot a wedding. Um, <laughs> I love that. And I will say, like, you know, like getting fired was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because I felt like um, a lot of my potential was being held back because I spent a lot of my days um, working for a company that, although it was, a, it was great, you know, I worked in not-for-profit, um, 
it wasn't really rewarding me as far as like my creativity goes. And so after um, getting fired, you know, I picked up my things from Queens, moved to Harlem uptown. And then I was a bike messenger just so I could pay rent. So like during the day, I would like deliver packages from building to building. At nighttime, I would deliver food. Um, and I'm still grateful for those times as hard as it was because I was able to go around the city and see every crevice and take photos. So like a lot of my uh, earlier archive was just based on me just on a bike, um, running around the city, taking photos here and there, and um, just kind of just, I don't know, just trying to create as much as possible. And so like fast forward to like about 20, I want to say like 26, 15, 16 was when um, I was able to make photography a full-time thing. Um, it was still very, very difficult, but I was able to link up with like a fashion blogger who was able to pay me my rate, which was super low at the time. Um, and it just kind of helped supplement my income. And so like, I mean, that was when I actually first felt successful as an artist because if I was able to keep a roof over my head, just taking photos, then I felt like I kind of made it. And so I was taking photos for professionally with like, um, with brands like Adidas, Nike, Puma. Uh, I was slowly building up like my Instagram following. Like I said, like web two, I was early on. And, um, that's kind of where like the visuals of my peer kind of was birthed. And, and, uh, and that's kind of where my career kind of started. Now, if you want to fast forward to the cold shoot, um, that shoot happened, uh, I think in 2020. It was right before dropping a project. Uh, my friend Felton, who does a lot of creative for them at Dreville, hit me up with an opportunity to take some photos for him. And then I was like, of course, that's the homie. Like, it's something that, you know, I've always wanted to strive for as far as, like, my, my skills and my craft, as far as, like, getting it sharp, getting it right, you know, because, um, you know, things like that. It's, like, usually, like, opportunity meets skill. And so, like, if you don't have your skills right, then if the opportunity comes by, you're not going to be prepared for it. So, like, I want to be as prepared as possible uh, for the moment in which, you know, I would be called on by the homies to, like, come out and work for them. So um, that was the experience. It was, like, super chill. I mean, obviously, hard of, <laughs> in the heart of pandemic, so everyone was a little bit scared to, like, be confronted. But we shot it in, like, the Lower East Side in Manhattan. Like, and honestly, everyone who even knew that it was him was very respectful, um, it was like a full day shoot. I shot a music video. It was like really fun. And it was like cool to just hang out with the homies again like it was back in college days. Wait, so you shot a music video for him? I didn't shoot the music video. I was on set doing photos. Um, oh. The homie Scott Laser was the director. What was it? Is that the, the Jackie? Um, nah, that was the one um, off the last mixtape. Uh, this is the one that we shot with um, in the Lower East Side. I forgot the, I forget the, the title of the song, but... Um, yeah. So fast forward a little bit further, and I just wanted to talk about your collection, bro. Let me look at the vol. I mean, the volume is going crazy. Let's see the activity. Let me click on this. So, guys, yeah, I got if, blessed this week. You got blessed. <laughs> I was like, man, this is perfect timing to talk about this. So, guys, I mean, I'm not just saying this because Pierre's on here, but if you want to get in, if you want the alpha before the alpha, I always talk about that on my YouTube channel, the alpha before the alpha. If you want to get in on the ground floor of an emerging artist who, in my personal opinion, has the connections, is like in the mix in Web3, um, the collection on OpenSea is Here Today, Gone Tomorrow, A Series of Fleeting Moments by Pierre. 0.25 floor price to just scoop up one of your own and and there's a lot of great pieces out there you can like find the one that connects with you the most but like yeah i mean last i mean 13 minutes ago someone scooped up a nice piece 17 hours ago and then just damn what was it two days ago this shit went crazy what yeah, happened it went nuts it went nuts uh i don't know people must have got gotten hip i guess uh the homie will nichols definitely put out the bat signal too as well which helped you know drive sales which is also why i love like web threes because like you're, you're literally helping your friends create and also maintain a, a, a their their life in in this new space you know what i'm saying it's like it's each one teach one each one help one you know whenever i get a sale i always buy someone else's art and it's like i don't know i just feel like most artists we just love to just help each other out and, and i love that yeah so for people, so how, how'd you, yeah, how'd you meet Will Nichols? Will Nichols, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's got legend, 
legend. Most people in this space would probably know him right now as he's yeah. he's working on Weather Report, which right. I think is the most hyped uh, project coming up. Yeah, um, I it's gonna to be one of the biggest team. projects this year, without a doubt. Oh, easily. It just it already seems like a movement. Like I got my trucker hat the other night. Um, I probably Go. slipped up. Honestly, I only got one, and then like. I was like, oh, shoot. I, it, I don't know if it closed or not yet, but I should have got, like, a couple just to keep in the attic. But uh, Should have swept the floor, man. Yes, the Series 1 drop. It's going to be worth uh, worth extra in, in the future. But how how'd you meet Will? And, um, yeah, how'd you yeah. meet Will? So how I met Will was about, I want to say, six or seven years ago. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of this photography community called Street Dreams Mag. Um, it's, it's, it was created by, you know, Eric Veloso, Mike, and Steve Sweatpants. Uh, pretty much, we, as a community of photographers, we'd go around from city to city, put on gallery exhibitions. We had um, a print magazine that we dropped uh, quarterly and that we would feature a bunch of photographers that we thought were really dope. And one of the stops that we had a pop-up in was in Chicago. Uh, it was like February, I want to say 2015, I want to say. And that's when uh, we did it in conjunction with Heist Nobody, uh, because at the time, Will was um, a correspondent there at, at Heist Nobody, and we did the party and uh, event together. And so I, one of the coldest days I feel like we're out there, we all uh, went out to take some photos. And then that's why I met this. I met the other person who was like probably just as cold as me, and it happens to be Will. And so I was like, yo, bro, it's freezing, bro. We got to get the fuck out of here. And so like ever since then, it's like we just kind of just vibe. Um, he's been like, like my brother ever since. Uh, and we worked on a, a bunch of other projects together. We had a, a creative collective called Finally Offline with uh, Z, Zach Goes Hard, who's also the other uh, founding oh, member of Weather Report. Okay. I see yeah, that. so we go way back. That's like the timeline. And we and, and there we did like projects with Adidas. We had a whole campaign with them called Goodbye Summer along with uh, Gusto35, um, in which we like kind of gave out film roles to the communities in New York and LA. And we held like a gallery and photo, um, a photo party um, in both coasts for people. So it was great because we were able to empower the community by giving them tools in order to create photos. A lot of them, it was their first time even using film cameras and we got to hang up their work in a very prestigious gallery show uh, beyond the streets. So, I mean, that's kind of what we've always been doing. That's why Web3 kind of just feels very like innate and easy to us because it's like, it's literally what we've been doing in IRL, but now we're doing it in URL. So combining those things have always been our, our ethos. Holy shit. Did you just come up IRL, URL? That was, that's a bar. That's, that's the rap lyric of the year. Oh my God. I mean, uh, get I the studio that, ready. Sure. Get the studio ready, man. <laughs> For sure. Um, so do you have, are you a, like, are you on the weather report team or you're just supporting the homies or what's I'm, I'm on as a content director. So like, you know, a lot of the, the stuff that we're working on right now to put out, uh, I'm going to be helping to flesh out creative, uh, get more, more, um, more information to the people, to the community. And yeah, but like this, this is definitely Zach and Will's show. And I'm just here to support, you know, I feel as though like, you know, with, with, with projects this big, as you know, it's, it's always important to incorporate great minds together in order to get the best value out of it to the community. And that's like number one priority for Weather Report. Yeah, I got to uh, say you snapped on the, the pictures on the merch store. Like I get Terry Richardson vibes. Yes. From, from those. Like, yeah, it was like Terry Richardson, Old yeah. Supreme. That was like on the mood board. I'm glad to see that you caught that. So I, I guess it translated well. Absolutely, bro. I thought it was fresh. It just like gave me like cool LA vibes, as, as as weird as that or as cringy or whatever as that sounds. But it just felt like it just seemed very fresh. And yeah, Terry Richards. I also was a big. I'm like a big photography guy, so that's why I like I'm like I didn't even realize you're a photographer when I met you the other day. I would have talked to you about it, but like always been a big fan of like Jonathan Mannion too and, and, and Terry Richardson and yeah. and all that. Um, but like. You know, you guys have such a unique photography background, um, but, you know, you're rocking the Weather Report profile picture right now. What's what's kind of your connection with the art and why do you guys why did you guys kind of land on that style? Um, I would say like the style is, is definitely the brainchild of Will and Zach. Um, they're the guys who kind of been uh, orchestrating uh, with our art team, as, the art department, as far as like you know, aesthetic, vibe, like traits and all these other things. Um, 
And so, like, it's just being cool to just watch them cook up, like, these ideas and put them out in place. I think at the next uh, space, they can definitely dive deeper into that. For sure. Um, yeah, anything, I mean, let's see. We got, like, two minutes until I'm going to invite some of the uh, some of our friends from Little Lemon Friends who, I mean, what well, that's a cool project, too, bro. You, uh, are, you definitely are you scored one. I definitely have a Little Lemon. I got a nice Do you? little green joint. Yeah, I got a green joint. Oh, that's yeah. that sounds rare. Yeah, I haven't even seen that before. Um, Maybe I'll switch up my PFP. Oh, that man, that'd be the movement. Um, so yeah, feel free. I'm gonna invite them up. Uh, how, if if they're in here right now, we got there are a couple team members that are gonna join us. Um, and if if you guys are in here, uh, request. Let me bring you up. I have their names here as well. But yeah, I mean, we're just gonna keep it loose. And at any point, you can all have some questions. Um, uh, you might have some questions. You're a holder too, so you might be even more uh, keen on 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 them as well. But um, let's see, who do we got here? You guys having fun? So, how's the crowd doing? You got? It seems like we got we got some some cool people in here. We got some cool profile pictures. I'm glad. You know, I'm glad I'm I'm seeing a, a diverse group of of profile pictures here. And um, man, Crash Test Joyride is showing out. Every man, I. I got to I want to I honestly invited Crash Test Joyride on here cuz I've been wanting to buy one and I was like can I like can I ask you guys some questions <laughs> like selfishly all right 13th element I just brought him up or him or her up uh they're one of the team members of Little Lemon Friends and I think we also have uh Rula Nose and Erica Lee um I'm not sure if they're in here yet if you guys are please request but in the meantime 13th element rocking the frenzy Okay, we got Rula here. Okay, cool. And I think we're just waiting on Erica. But um, Rula, 13th, what's up? Can y'all hear me? Gang, gang, to my cats, up to all my I think ducks. I think you're still connecting. Ah, okay. There might be. I, it looks like one of them might have just got rugged, too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just give a brief intro on Little Lemon Friends. Just one of the most impressive grassroots organic communities out there, in my opinion. Like, um, really, um, people love love their, their Little Lemon. Damn, he's got the blue Little Lemon Friends. That's fresh. Can you guys hear me now, Rula or 13? Hello. Hey, hey, I, I can hear you now. Sorry. Sorry. I, I was calling Rula to make sure he was on here. Yes, sir. What's up, guys? Happy to be here. Happy to be Happy here. Much. So I wanted to congratulate you guys first off on 5K unique holders. How important is that for a project? That's a pretty cool feat for a 10K project. Oh man, it's uh, it's a blessing. You know, it's 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 you know it's it's organic. I feel um, you know I'm super proud to be part of the Little Lemons. The community is just so you know, warm and organic, and you know it's just all good intent. A lot of friends in there, um, and you know it's just. A bunch of us just helping each other out and following the lemon journey, you know, which is everyone is going out for their own adventure. And it's it's been amazing to watch it grow. And the expansion is just amazing. You know, we welcome everybody, lemon or not. And I think that's what makes it special. You know, we're just here to help people and connect on different levels because Web3 is, you know, so it can be overwhelming, you know, for a lot of people. And the more we help each other out, you know, the more we WGMI pretty much. Absolutely. I mean, I was just saying before you guys hopped on how organic the project was um, seemingly kind of came out of nowhere. I would have loved to have been like the guy who said I was the first one to find Little Lemon Friends. But it just like one day I went on Twitter and everyone was very excited about this project. I, I think I saw Klon, the artist of Cool Cats, get in on it. A lot of like people I really trust and respect in this space. Um, can you give me like like a brief origin story of how this all came to be what's the squeeze <laughs> yeah um so sonerius is the um the founder of low lemons he's uh based out of canada um he pretty much started a group um a, a, around web3 with uh, a group uh with his friends and uh you know they came up with a project that you know they wanted to do themselves and 
um, you know, they said, we love lemons. Why not draw a lemon? And uh, Sunerius uh, drew that character that everyone has grown to love. And it just was an instant classic. And I myself started with 13 Element in our own group. We kind of did the same thing. And that's kind of how we grouped up with uh, Sunerius. Uh, we were both for the same mission. And it's just been a group of friends really wanting to people. But as far as the little lemons go, um, you know, it was it was intuition. It seemed like everything just worked well and it organically just spread like wildfire, which is amazing. And everything was in sync. It aligned with everybody's vision that's on the team. And, um, you know, each day we're holding spaces and all these different community events that we do. And we're welcome to everybody and anybody. And the more that people join us, you know, they, they love the community, they show their appreciation and, um, you know, it's just a, a good feeling knowing that people want to join and be a part of something like this that is so organic. And 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 the reason me and uh, me and Rula and uh, w- uh, my cousin Whistle we joined is because the, the the vision aligned with our vision. I've always been the type to help people. I've always been the type to like that gives me a high. I I want to I want to make sure uh, I could do my best to try and help somebody if I can because people have helped me out in in the past. And I've and I've struggled like 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 Visuals was saying. I'm a photographer, man. I quit my job, man. I, I saved enough money, quit my job, and made it happen with photography. And then it, I just kind of got into the cannabis industry because uh, I've been in the cannabis industry for a minute. So I, I got into marketing, and uh, as as Web three developed, you know, NFTs just made sense as as a creator. And when we connected with uh, Sono. He, he told us his vision and, and it really aligned with, with what I believe. I, I don't get behind anything that I don't believe. Like, like I, I, want, I want the world to be a better place. So in order for the, for the world to be in a better place, I have to align with, with things for me to join them. So the Little Lemons have been a great community. It's, it's a family. We, we, we want everybody, even if you don't, you don't have a lemon, you can't afford a lemon or you don't want a lemon, you, you can be part of the family. You know, like we're there to help. Uh, we, we just want everybody to like feel like like they can do it, man. I, ca- I come from Mexico. I'm, I'm an immigrant. Um, I couldn't get a real job till I was 21. I ended up getting DACA. I don't know if people are familiar with DACA, but um, so I have that right now. And um, it was a struggle for me, you know, growing up in the States. Um, and uh, I, I was by myself. I had to, you know, toughen up and and, you know, make it happen. So now I want people to feel safe and not have to go through what I went through in any space, you know. And the Web3 space is, is kind of crazy, you know. There's a lot of scams. So, so we do all the research so other people don't have to, like, like get scammed and we, we provide the things. I mean, obviously, everybody has to do their own research, but, like, we just want to provide people with tools that they can utilize to, to you know, to, to make it and, and, and be, be a happy family because we should all be happy and, and, and love life. Yeah. And to piggyback off, uh, you know, 13, um, you know, that's primarily my number one main reason is I don't want people to get discouraged, you know, when they join a project and it's not going the way they think or they invest their money into something and it ends up being a rug. Um, You know, I'll I'll be the guinea pig for that and I'll pretty much do my research and uh, figure out, you know, what what's the foundation for a good project. That way uh, we can encourage more people to join because this is the way of the world. You know, it's only a matter of time until everybody has some kind of NFT pass for access to whatever their service is. Um, and I think the more we help people early on, um, it'll stop people from shying away or experiencing bad times. And, you know, um, if someone does experience a bad time, um, you know, we're also here to help and figure out what went wrong in that process. So it's just a matter of, you know, helping everybody that wants to be helped. Man, I love hearing stories like that. I mean, it seems like, you know, uh, Pierre was talking about his come up. You guys are talking about your backgrounds. You know, I've been a vocal on my Twitter, you know, recently about some health problems I've had. So we all have these like um, these these stories and, and these journeys that we're on that um, give us give us a why. Um, and I think everyone in this space has a, has a strong why um, moving forward. Um, what's kind of, what's kind of the mission for little lemon friends? Like I see, um, you guys have some merch coming up soon. Like how, how do you guys want to market yourselves other than just like a really organic community? I mean, is this going to be like a, are you doing streetwear or are you going to do any metaverse plays or am I going to be able to like, 
use my little lemon friend in the sandbox game to like beat the shit out of a cyber kongs like what are what are we doing <laughs> yeah there's gonna be some uh there's gonna be some merch dropping in the in a couple days um february 6th and uh we do have a pixel lemon coming out and if you own a uh a little lemon, a pixelated version will be able to be used in the metaverse. It's going to carry the same traits as your little lemon. That's a little later this month. Um, so yeah, you know, we're kind of just, uh, we've got so many projects and um, ideas in our heads that, um, you know, we're kind of just trying to make it all happen and figure out how we're going to roll it out. Cause it's, uh, it's really awesome to see how many people, you know, want to collaborate and work. And, um, you know, we definitely want, you know, intend to go global and, you know, just work with as many people as we can and just keep providing more utility f- from our little lemons and to the community. And, and, and we're, we're looking at long term, you know, we're looking at like g- growth and organic growth. So um, we, we definitely want to make this global, you know, we definitely want to like do innovation. So, so the ideas are coming, you know, that the, the ideas have been talked about. There's so much things in the back that we, we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, not, not everything is going to be to fruition, but like whatever it is, it, I just know that it's going to be it's going to be really dope. And we, and we do it in, with a good heart and intention to create the most amazing community that we can create. And uh, just going back a little bit to, to you say some health issues, uh, man, I, I'm all about health. So and I'm all about herbal medicine. And I've you know, I've done I've done curing before and I've like I just have a whole experience. So if, if you want to reach out and I could help in any way, like you know, reach out. Thanks, bro. I love you for that. For real. I mean, I just literally met you on this space, but uh, your background, like your journey, and then you, you know, wanting to circle back on that while we're talking about, you know, your, this amazing project. That's that's really cool. That's really personal. That's, that's what this Web3 is all about. Um, I just wanted a quick shout out to some of the people in the crowd. Shout out my guy, Sesh. Uh, Sesh uh, worked on Feudals and he's just an OG I've, I've met him before he, he's a cool guy we also got Dose from Crypto Ray Ray's in the crowd he's going to be coming up here soon if either of you guys want to request you guys can for sure come up because you guys are the homies um, but man a great crowd in here so far um, what's it like for you guys when I mean I follow this uh, Twitter account and I think everyone should uh, if, if you're like in NFTs it's called uh, NFT Whale Alert and it shows you when um, like above floor sales happen. And I love when I see like these rare little lemon friends go for like two, three, four, five ETH. Why do you think people are uh, gravitating toward like, why do people want their forever little lemon friends? Well, uh, me, myself, I, I, uh, I've had lemons since like uh, early December. I jumped in and out of lemons. And when I joined the team, I, I made a decision to sell one of my alien friends, which is like one of the projects I really like believe in. I, it was kind of hard to buy the lemon you see now for two point, I think it was 2.1 ETH. And I mean, it's, it's an emerald, emerald lemon. You know, I'm all into your spirituality and gems and it has cucumbers on its eyes. So it's still relaxing, but still like ready to party with a hat. So I had to pick them up and that's my forever lemon. So that's why I did it. And, and it just like kind of like I was, you know, browsing the, the little lemons and that's the one that called my name so i, f- I feel like that's you know, usually how people pick their lemons i i, I say this uh, i don't know if you know uh, this about crystals but they say when a crystal is done with you it leaves you and it finds a new person to help out and i feel like that's the little lemons you know once a little lemon is done with you it's gonna find the next the next uh the next person to help out because you know the community is amazing yeah, same same for me. You know, the amethyst is just one of my favorite stones. Um, I have it all around my house, around my neck. Um, you know, and it's just it's so funny that I found a lemon that carried that same trait. And I, when it comes to lemon, I think people just click with a certain lemon. I think it has traits that a person resemble, you know, resembles with, whether it be you know um, the type of accessories it has on or the type of face it has. Um, it's just something about it. It, it, you know, when I chose mine, I felt it in my gut. I know that sounds weird cause it's an NFT. Um, but I definitely genuinely felt it, um, because, you know, you can pull, pull up a screen and see hundreds, but that just one lemon stood out to me. And, um, from there it was just love at first sight and it's my forever lemon. Um, and I think that's how a lot of people in our community pick their lemon is just, you know, finding that connection. 
I gotta say, Little Lemon Friends might have the most diverse group of of holders. Like, I think, uh, like I see uh, her name's Hales. I think she's in the crowd right now. I just followed her recently. I, um, I, we I love see Hales. a lot of. Yeah, for sure. She seems cool. Hales is uh, awesome. Yeah, like I feel like a we lot love of the women... Hales. <laughs> Damn, she's getting so much love right now. Like, um, oh. <laughs> But I just feel like a lot, like, I, I think Sarah Stargirl also has one. She's, like, another cool collector of Ford Ape OG that I met down in Miami. Like, all these people I've met, like, uh, women, uh, people from different diverse backgrounds. You're talking about, you know, your your history. You know, you're from, from Mexico. Um, just shout out to you guys for building such a diverse community. Uh, one last question for you guys, though. And this is... A lot of a lot of listeners here want some alpha boys, and we're gonna leak some alpha. I'm like a plumber; I, I just I deal with leaks. Leak something for me. What's the one thing you guys can tell me right now that even the most devoted little lemon friend holder wouldn't know about the project that they should know? <laughs> you gave me no time to uh, to talk about it, but uh, or even think about that answer, but. <laughs> Uh, you know, in all respect for Cenarius and his vision, I'm just going to say, uh, um, you know, we're thinking of somehow getting where that's where you can find stuff. Um, but I can't share too much besides that. Yeah. So, so, so we're, so we're building, we're trying to, we're trying to do an EP and we, we got some cool people working on it. Um, so, um, that's that's just about what we can say right now. Uh, but just know we're doing some cool stuff, you know. Uh, Damn, y'all are like the the government with Area Fifty One. You guys aren't giving anything up. Uh, sheesh. God, hey, God, hey, God, hey, uh, that that we makes it homies. interesting. We gotta, res- gonna get- we gotta respect the Lemon Lord. Yeah, lemon yeah, we do, Lord. we do. You know, uh, we do gotta respect the Lemon Lord. Yeah, he's not in here right now. We we can delete the recording of this. Everyone in here, we take a code of silence. No, nah, just kidding. But you guys are both amazing, and I definitely want to have you back on my show. This is episode two of my show, and I'm already blessed with like, look at the look at the speakers I'm talking to right now. Look at the people in the crowd. Like, just so blessed to like be able to share this platform with you guys. Big fan of the project. Uh, thank you guys so so much. If you're not already. Follow Little Lemon Friends on Twitter. Like I said, just a great community, super organic lemon squeeze. Um, definitely got to do like some. You know, ever been in LA? They have that like uh, that that great. I always get lunch at a place called Lemonade. You guys got to do like or a Chick Fil A lemonade mashup or something. I don't know. We got to like really like we got to grow the, the the brand with just whatever. Like maybe Beyonce didn't she have a song called Lemonade? I don't know. I'm tripping out right now. I'm just blabbering on. But I, I, shout out to I, you I, guys. I, I, <laughs> I'd be thinking like L- Lemonade by Gucci Mane, you know? That'd be we need to get crazy. Gucci, we, I, I'm saying we need to get Gucci Mane and Lemon. Wiz- Ger- Bur- what did he say? Bur- I was like, yeah, okay. Um, I'm probably getting deep platform. I just got a message from uh, from Twitter. They said I need to, I need to get off here because I'm, I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so, so much. Um, hey. We got another great guest coming up for you guys. And I know everyone's going to be super excited about this one because the whole crowd is filled with these profile pictures. Crash, test, joyride. Um, I don't know exactly who I'm talking to from Crash, test, joyride. I was talking to their main account. But um, please request to come up because um, I got a helmet on. I'm I'm strapped in. I'm going to buckle up. And we're going to go on a joy ride and it's going to get bumpy. It's going to get crazy, but, um, yeah, let's fucking go boys. All right. Um, still waiting on them to request all Yo, send cool them. times. Can I say something? Of course. Dose from crypto yeah. Ray Rays. What's up, gang? <laughs> What's going on? Thank you for having me. Uh, 13th element. Um, I heard your story about being an immigrant and coming from especially a Latin, a Latino country. I was born and raised in Colombia, South America, and I came here at the age of 10. So seeing another Latino, another immigrant in Web3 just makes me so fucking proud. Uh, thank you for being in the space. Glad to have you. Uh, I know your friend, too, is also in the space. Who, who your, your friend. Um, yeah, man, really proud of you. 
so glad you're in the space with 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 everyone else as a latino i'm very very proud of you thank, thank you for that thank you for that i appreciate it you know it was a struggle i came into this country when i was 10 too and and i know the struggle man it, it was it was it was insane and i'm still struggling with it you know uh, I, I honestly can't leave the country because of DACA, you know, because I, I might not be able to come back and that's kind of shitty. But I, I live I live my life happily, you know, and I appreciate you and I appreciate you for being on the space, too. And I love the Ray Rays, too. I have a Ray Ray myself. So th- thank you for uh, thank creating you, the- no. Yeah. No, thank you, bro. Uh, no, mire, este, este mundo es nuestro, entonces, para que, sí. pa que sean nosotros. That's what's so cool you. about this space. You get to relate to people on a different personal level, on a deeper level. You know, a lot of us, uh, you know, I was an immigrant myself and, you know, I'm, I'm not Latino, but it's just amazing to hear and, and get connected on, on a deeper level. And, you know, shout out Cool Times. Mans has incredible energy, always has the great questions on deck. Pierre, great to see you up here too. That man's the true OG. Uh, good vibes here all around. Super excited for this series. Uh, th- thanks for having me up here. Great vibes. Yeah, bro, you're getting a DM after this. We'll, we'll get you on. Like, you know, stick around if you can. I understand if you got to bump off, but we'll get. We'll, I want to get you on for another episode because well, I've had him on my YouTube. Go ch- go check out my interview with Sesh on YouTube. That that that, that one was actually a banger. I was one of my best most viewed interview. So, so definitely go check that out. I'm shamelessly plugging my YouTube right now, but, um, God, man, I love this space so far, man. You guys are awesome. And I think I, did we just leak, uh, some little lemon friends, crypto Ray Ray potential collab. And I think we might've just confirmed that there might be a, a collab on the way there should be, but, um, woof. did you say woof? Woof, 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 woof. lemon, lemon. Oh my! All right, everyone who's here for Crash Test Joyride is probably like, "All right, uh, wrap it up, guys." Uh, no, there's some great stories being told here, but um, God, we got a we got a great speaker lineup here right now. We got DL, the architect, literally the architect of one of the coolest projects around right now, Crash Test Joyride. DL, I think there are some other team members up here, unless I just invited some randoms up here. I don't know. DL, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Thanks for having me um yeah we got cool times as well uh we got um thank you cool times we got DeFi as well too and we got permanent marker my two partners on here as well too that's the three of us from ctjr so i've just recently came across your project and i almost didn't even want to like do too much research into this because i this is one of you have one of the few projects off of artwork alone where i'm like i probably just want to have this in my wallet because it right. looks so cool but going on your website it seems like there's a very customization there's a customizable aspect of your project um how did you guys come uh come to that decision and how, how big do you think the customization is a part of uh crash test joyride right um well thank you thank you for the uh the, the, the kind words from that. Um, I think that's why a lot of people are uh, gravitated to our project as well, too. Um, from just our community, people have been talking about, like, a lot of people are commenting that this project is something that reminds them of, like, when the, the, the kind of earlier days when NFT profile pictures were, like, a very original expression. Um, and, uh, and we felt like that was kind of, like, something that we really wanted to to lean on. I, I'm somebody that doesn't really even come from the NFT or um, digital space at all. I'm trained as an architect and um, uh, I've always done art and illustration, but never in a never in a professional capacity. I actually work here in New York as an architect um, full time as well, too. Um, and speaking with my partners, they really discouraged me from like going in and checking out other projects at the time. Um, and they just said, you know what, just draw whatever, whatever comes to mind, something that makes you laugh. And um, when we were doing it, we were also just referencing other, um, other, when we were doing the website, we were just really referencing other websites that I enjoyed the design of, that I enjoyed being on, whether it was um, uh, um, uh, like, uh, I think we're especially referencing um, fashion label uh, websites as the inspiration. And um, I feel like as our mantra, we've always felt like 
we're trying to attract um, creative people, people with talent themselves. Um, that's something that we've been working on uh, in our Discord community. We've been holding art contests uh, for the community, and there's been some really crazy production, especially in the last few days. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check out our Twitter, um, because we have a really talented community of people who are attracted um, to the art, and we just wanted to make something that would kind of be like, hey, everybody in our community we consider also a creator. Um, and so, uh, yeah, essentially, like, uh, we wanted to put people on as well as ourselves. We wanted to use our platform also as a way to kind of be patrons of the arts as well, too. It's very interesting. You actually have an architectural background, but I get, like, very much a streetwear type vibe from your project. So where do you kind of see Crash Test Joyride? Uh, how do you see it evolving uh, through this year? Obviously, it's it's got this, you know, confident swagger to it. Um, right. So I'm wondering, is, you know, and, and is this more about, is this a streetwear brand? Uh, we'll see. I mean, like you said, a confident swagger. I totally agree. That's something that definitely we want to embody with our um with all of our visuals and our imagery everything that the brand puts out um is something like that because the way that sometimes when i'm going through a tough period in life something that is i don't know like where i have some questions or uncertainty or doubt um anxiety or whatever sometimes i feel strengthened by thinking of myself as a character um in like an animated film or, or just like thinking about like, as if a movie crew was was filming my life. And somehow that strengthens me. And um, I like that little lemon friends had mentioned that they see theirs as some token or uh, like, um, like gem that they take along with them um, as like a, as a companion. Well, I think at CTJR, we kind of see ourselves as creating alter egos. Um, so we, we, we want to, we want to, have something that projects the best version of yourself. People that they recognize something that they see in themselves that just does it in a very confident, swaggy kind of way. So um, uh, there's that um, in itself for the for the NFT project. As far as the apparel and the streetwear um, aspect, that's also something that I'm incredibly personally interested in. Um, while I am trained as an architect, uh, I think that, you know, architects should also look good. I feel like everybody should express themselves um, through what they wear uh, as an architect. And as a Taurus, I'm definitely a materialistic person and not in, I think, a vapid sense, but in a way that I feel like, um, you know, like it's, it's just like it's, it's a tool for communication. It's a language, really. Um, what we clothe ourselves in and we wanted the the label the the apparel label to actually be a similar thing a similar tool as what the nft project does not something that merchandises the nft on it but another avenue for empowerment pretty much and self-expression um uh i'm actually uh, I was educated at the Harvard Graduate School of Design as an architect, and um, I was uh, I was actually in the crowd when Virgil Abloh, the late Virgil Abloh, respects came to came to speak to us. Um, and we the school opened the the, the lecture to the public, and um, and <laughs> it was actually one of the few lectures that I went to during my master's education there. That um, there was probably more people from the public than there were actually um, students and faculty uh, yeah, in, the, in the audience. And it was, it was actually really like one of the best lectures I ever went to during the four years that I was there. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but Virgil was also educated as an architect at the ICC in Chicago. And, um, you know, but he was never somebody that was kind of uh, confined to a single medium. Um, and I've always called my same, uh, myself the same way. So whether it's illustration, apparel, architecture, um, sculpture, jewelry, I, I have something to say through, through all those mediums. Um, and that's not to say that I feel like the NFT thing is not 
we're, we're not trying to forget about that. I feel like CTHR is about exploring kind of new avenues in which you can kind of like introduce yourself to the world. We're trying to fluidly navigate our way through both the physical and the digital worlds. Um, kind of like, you know, art, they say like sometimes reality mimics art, you know, we're trying to have that with the, um, with the clothing line and then have like a kind of symbiotic relationship and bring it back. So then interestingly, maybe the serum will, will imitate the things that we, we learned from the, uh, from the apparel side of it. What That's such it? a yeah. point. Oh, shout out uh, Virgil Abloh. Uh, I was lucky enough to work on it with him for Off White, but DL brings up an amazing point because everyone in this space is not really confined to one thing, you know. And he, I believe, he set the blueprint for for that and really letting your creativity uh, uh, wander with your imagination. So definitely shout out Virgil, and you know, shout out you guys for picking up left off yeah man he's an amazing spirit and he's somebody who dedicated his craft and and his unfortunately short life to really putting on young creators as well too and that's an aspect that we're interested in doing at ctjr r.i.p virgil definitely influenced a lot of, of people a lot of creatives in this whole next wave of you know this whole generation. Um, I was actually talking to, uh, well, actually my intro, I don't know if you guys were in here earlier, but I was saying like one of my favorite artists in like contemporary times is, is Ty Dolla Sign. I think he's got right. a tremendous voice and I've never been like super influenced by like the select, like, you know, Justin Bieber bought a doodles. Like I'm not going to go rush to my computer to go buy a doodles or like Jake Paul is doing a coin. I'm not going to like, uh, I'm actually going to like probably walk away from my computer at that point. But uh, I saw Ty Dolla sign like the first time he's ever tweeted about an NFT. He picked up a crash test joyride. I'm just curious. Like, is that something that organically like, ha- like, does that just like permeate <laughs> through like, like Hollywood and get to Ty Dolla sign or I don't there, know, man, I guess how does that honestly, happen? like, <laughs> It was like, it was funny. It was like a, probably the day before that we were getting a lot of pressure in our discord from people like, you know, spend some money on marketing, like, um, like go hire an influencer or something to pump your things. These guys, as probably everybody on here has, has experienced, these guys are very, very expensive. Um, a shout out from Ty Dollar Sign like that would probably cost between fifty and a hundred thousand um, dollars, and that was totally organic. That by the way, I can rise. I can tell you didn't pay him because you just called him Ty Dollar Sign instead of Ty Dollar Sign. So that's, that's <laughs> I'm uh, yeah. I, yeah, no, I, I mean, I fuck with his music. Okay. I fuck, I fuck with his music absolutely. He's the king of. Um, of features and he knows his lane and 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 he crushes it within it and um honestly like i feel like the community definitely open uh welcomed him with open arms um and we hope to to kind of like uh you know extend that extend that warmth further in uh in, in you know further communication with him but yeah no it's dope it's totally organic i don't know how he, he got clued into that but um i don't know i guess something about the project spoke to him He's definitely the Nate Dog of this generation. He's the right. guy. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Nate Dog. Shout out Nate Dog, RIP Nate Dog. But um okay, let let's get into some alpha. Let's you know, I we got you guys really have a great community. I see like once I announced this uh Twitter spaces, immediately started getting flooded by Crash Test Joyride. Joy Riders? Are we calling them Joy Riders? Is that what we're going with or what's yeah, they like to be they like to be called Joy Riders. Or Crash Test Dummies, we call them dummies. Nah, I'm probably not nah, dumb. Nah. No dummies. No, it's okay. Joy, it's joy riders, I, yeah. All right. I think like forty of them just left the the space when I called them dummies. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, so, hey, I see your roadmap here. March and April, maybe a second drop, a second species. You don't want it to be too dilutive. What are we looking at here? Um, let me let me pass the the baton to. Um... One of my partners, I think they could probably speak on that a little bit better than I can. Hey, how's it going? This is DeFi Senpai. Yo. 
Yo, so yeah, I'm here to drop some alpha. <laughs> um, we, we just recently planned out what we're going to do for our serum drops. And we're most likely going to call them brushes. And it's going to be like a random drop where there's essentially three different types that you'd be able to get, get a hold of. But you wouldn't know like which one you're going to get. So there's going to be some cool gamification with that. Yo, do you want to explain like what, what the nature of the brushes is? Yeah, you just left me with the biggest cliffhanger ever. Um... <laughs> so, I mean, like there will be like certain rarities for each brush. Um, so everyone's going to guaranteed get at least one brush, but you don't know which type it's going to be. And we're hiring, you know, two additional artists who are going to have um, a crazy palette uh, as well as working on our own one as well. Um, and we feel like this is like a really unique aspect. We can showcase like all different types of art this way. Um, and it's going to, they're going to rhyme from the original joy rider. So you'll be able to apply. I mean, if someone wants to, they'd be able to purchase like additional types of brushes. If someone didn't want to apply theirs and wanted to sell it instead, but everyone's going to guaranteed be able to get one of these brushes. Yeah. yeah. And then sequence with um, the apparel too. So with my role, I'm, with the with NFT art as well too, I'm I'm, sh I'm like kind of pivoting into more of a creative director role for, um, for those brushes as uh, DeFi mentioned, while I simultaneously continue to work on the um on the label. Uh, permanent marker here. I'm surprised DeFi just dropped that whole thing because we literally just sort of finalized this, but this is essentially three collections. If that wasn't clear. So each of these brushes is its own full collection, its own style, um, ideally from a different artist with their, with their unique take on what CTJR is about. And so you can apply any or all of these brushes to your rider and it, it sort of enhances it and creates a new version with whatever style that brush represents. Um, so it's a big undertaking. It's more than just a single transformation. There's, there's essentially three whole collections that you have to do, but it'll it'll be amazing we're super pumped for it seems super innovative i mean i, I love the projects that aren't just um the just dumping a new species or a new collection out there i thought what doodles did with space doodles where it's a non-dilutive addition mm -hmm. to their collection was really really cool mm -hmm. um and so i definitely appreciate that um God, I can't believe you guys dropped all that alpha. I hope everyone, <laughs> I hope know, everyone's I listening even. and excited. <laughs> and um, it, it, I'll, I'll, can I be completely honest with you guys for a second? Like, right when DeFi was explaining that and then just stopped abruptly, like I was, like I was on mute and I was about to take a piss because I couldn't hold it any longer, and I realized I had to unmute myself, and that was such a moment of panic for me. <laughs> um, but hey, um, I'm sure you guys will probably never want to join one of my spaces again after hearing that. But um, hey, we're, we're keeping it. It's episode two. We're still so early. OK, so I want to know about why is this called Crash Test Joyride? Because this sounds like the sickest like PS1 game ever. You know, I, I used to play Twisted Metal all the time. So what explain to me, like, what is Crash Test Joyride and how is there not going to be like a play play to earn game involved? <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh man, that, you're, you're, you're hilarious. Now that is, there's so many, so much there, <laughs> but, um, uh, how do we, start? I already, I already took the piss. Don't worry. I got it out. <laughs> we're flushed. We're good. To Honestly, go. because I have meetings daily on zoom and sometimes, you know, you just have that anxiety, like, am I on mute or, but, um, yeah, it was, it was something that honestly came out of a, like when we really first started. I, the guys were just like, man, just, just draw something. Um, and I just really wanted to just draw something that made me laugh. Um, and that's really where it came from. And, uh, I felt like the crash test dummy was something that just related to everybody. Um, in the sense that, you know, like, a, like an actual crash test dummy is, is literally meant to be the average human in the world. Like, is this car safe for the average person? Um, and we wanted to have a pretty much a blank slate that um express the kind of like the like the power of of clothing 
and uh, colors and backgrounds and, and all this stuff while having that while having that blank background. You know, there's a lot of other projects that did um, like apes, for example, and and that was cool. But we wanted something that was a little bit more human, but at the same time was kind of like abstracted. So I don't know. We went with crash test, but then the real the real tough part was uh, coming up with the joyride. Um, you know, there was like, but I don't know, like, I felt like with, with the whole vibe of, of what we are, we, we wanted to be something that was one positive. So we couldn't go with anything that put a negative spin on the crash test aspect of it. Um, and two, we wanted a verb rather than a noun. Like it was something like, you know, how like the word yacht club, or there's always like the society and to us that felt stagnant. And we wanted something that was like, we're on a movement, we're on a wave. And so we felt like the joyride was the right thing for that. Yeah, it's a really cool name. Um, I'm just going to leak some alpha myself. I'm doing a video tomorrow on my YouTube. You can find me on YouTube, Cool Times. And I'm going to be talking about like my, uh, I don't want to use that word undervalue, but just like some of the projects I'm looking at right now that I, I think you could get in uh at a great entry point and one of them is definitely gonna be crash test joyride um i, I love it's the the owner distribution is great right now you have 4.4k items and you have 2.2k owners i think that's super impressive for how recently this project has launched and you're almost at a thousand ethereum volume traded um i'm super excited about this project going forward um I just wanted to announce real quick as well. Uh, unfortunately, Crypto Ray Ray's uh, dose had to leave um, duty calls, I guess. And Crypto Ray Ray's had to take it. You know, one of the dogs had to go to bathroom or so he had to take it for a walk or something. I don't know. He had to leave um, a lot of a lot of problems on, on this space with the. Uh, with with that type of stuff i guess but um yeah unfortunately no crypto ray rays but i'm glad i was able to go a little bit longer with the crash test joyride um anything you guys you know you've got a, a bunch of your holders in here but you also have some people who are probably just learning about this project for the first time anything you guys uh before we wrap up uh anything you guys think you want to just uh, kind of share with your holders or or maybe some uh some of the new people listening um well, I just wanted to, you know, thank you, um, Cool Times, for giving us a platform just to share our story, um, as well as especially kind of, uh, it's really cool that you put us on all here together, because I feel like I'm kind of in a bubble as an artist myself. Um, and while, while uh, Visual Spy Pierre was talking, I was on his Instagram and his, and his Twitter, man, I really fuck with this stuff. Also, as a, as a Brooklyn um, based artist as well too. Um, it would be crazy as well to link up once our clothing um, line drops. I'd love to uh, figure out a way for you guys to, uh, or, or for you and your team to to get some shots of, of our stuff. We'll hook you up as well too. Um, as well, uh, in terms of in terms of the apparel, um, I just want to explain that like the way that I'm, the, the kind of direction that I'm trying to take for this label is that uh, I'm really approaching it like an architect, I guess, would, um, which is not only think about the bigger picture in the collection, but as well as like about the details and the materials. So I'm actually really excited to kind of take this next step in the career, explore this new avenue. I was just in the garment district yesterday speaking with embroiderers and label makers. Um, and, uh, and I cannot wait uh, for this collection to um to drop, I actually have uh, some of the samples on right now. Um, just testing it, making sure that these things are comfy enough for you guys. Super heavyweight materials. We're going with only premium um, level quality uh, blanks for this first collection. But um, yeah, just hold tight. It's coming. Thank you for being considerate of, of people who like cozy, uh, cozy wear. Cozy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Um, thanks so much. I mean, I, we were going to transition into crypto Ray Rays now, but uh, unfortunately, like I said, they had a bow out. So we'll reschedule that. Um, let's see. I don't know which. I guess we'll kind of wrap it up here. 
Um, if anyone has any questions, I don't know if you want to take any questions real quick, um, but if anyone wants to request and they have a question for me or Pierre or Sesh or 13th is still here from Little Lemon Friends or anyone uh, for Crash Test Joyride, uh, if anyone wants to quickly ask a question and don't be like, don't be the guy who's like, I have my own project that I'm actually working on. Like that happened last spaces and we brought up a guy on and he went on a huge rant and I had to like end up making fun of him. So don't make me be that guy. All right, let's see. Um, are you guys up for that, by the way? You want to take like a, a question or two real quick? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. All right. Uh, who do we got here? Let's, let's go with Jimmy, Jimmy Capo. Um, what's up, bro? Misfit. What's up? What's up, man? How you guys doing? Good, bro. Posted up on Spaces. Uh, sick, sick joy, uh, joy rider. There you got. Uh, Was that that's like a pimp coat or something? It's like a a puffer jacket, polka dot puffer jacket. Oh, puffer drip. drip, You know. All right, what's up, bro? Nothing. I just want to um say how great these dudes are doing on the project. Um, they've been killing it. They've been in the community every day. The community is amazing. So if Anyone just wants a good community, join the Discord. All the people in there are awesome. They're super supportive. And they've actually done a lot of marketing on their own. Like, um, I think the Ty Dolla Sign, one of the, um, some, his manager or someone posted a, a tweet saying he um, is looking for an NFT for Ty Dolla Sign. And he asked what he should get him. And everyone got together and not spammed, but, you know, uh, rated his, his tweet and got everyone to retweet it and post our crash test joy rides. And I think that's part of the reason Ty Dolla Sign got in it. So, um, the community is just awesome. And these dudes, um, DeFi and DL, they've been in the community every day, hyping everyone up and giving us something to look forward to on the project. Dope, dope. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I can definitely attest to the crash test joyride community showed out. Um, honestly, like I, I, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I just like project. I, I just like there's just certain projects that I, I vibe with and I really like the art here. Like no one in my life was telling me about crash. I actually P.O. from Nifty Alpha. Shout out to P.O. from Nifty Alpha. He has been a big proponent of Crash Test Joyride, but it's just something that I saw and I really responded to. Um, so, yeah, man, glad that uh, glad that uh, Jimmy, you could come and bring some context. All right, I'm gonna remove you if that's okay. Yep. Do, do, do you have a question or? Nope. All right, gang, gang, gang. All right, uh, let's we'll maybe see if we can get somebody up here. If you have to bounce, if anyone has to bounce. That's good. We'll we'll wrap this up soon. I'm just having a good time. Gang gang to my cats. Sub to all my ducks. Let's go. We got a couple more requests here. Um, all right. One of these guys follows me, so that's tight. If you got to follow me to get up here. Come on. All right. Um, Crypto Hayes. Oh, he's got a cool uh, crash test joyride banner on his Twitter too. Man, you're you're gang. <laughs> Yo. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me here. I want to say hello to everyone. And I just wanted to share something real quick. Um, I've been in the NFT space for like about a year now. And and I don't know if it's just me, but at times it feels very saturated. Like, it just feels like nothing is different. And the first time I saw Crash Test Dummy, um, well, not Dummy, Crash Test Joyride, it's like I fell in love at first sight. Like, immediately. And, and, and I just went in. <laughs> I just went in and, and um and the community is amazing, positive vibes. It's just the the whole the whole project is amazing. So I just wanted to share that, that with, with you guys. Yo, I mean this in the most sincere way, but like you need to get into voice acting. That's like one of the craziest voices I've ever heard. Um that like like, like you got a very st- distinct voice, bro. You should start hosting your own spaces. Well, uh, I, I mean, I don't know if it's stuck because I'm with my kids and the whole family here. And I have to, I have to go to one of the closets. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if it's the acoustic here that makes it sound like that. Yeah, it's like in a closet right now, you know. But, but yeah, man, I just want to thank dedication. you guys for the platform, you know, and yeah. and, and, and I want to say hello to everybody and share like my personal experience. Uh. With, with CTJR, it's just amazing so far. And the R, man, oh, man. Um, amazing. 
Man, just jumping on that real quick, we definitely had the same vibe. When we were first starting this project, we kind of felt like a lot of projects were almost converging. And you couldn't really tell the difference between a lot of the art or the roadmaps. And everything just seemed to meld into one. And so, yeah, DL mentioned that we we like intentionally wanted him not to look at other projects. We wanted this to just be a whole new, fresh perspective on the entire space. And I think the focus on the physical with our clothing label is a big step there in the right direction. Instead of going sort of deeper in the other way with looking at metaverse stuff or, or tokenomics or anything like that, we're really just linking it with the physical, which is honestly a much larger audience and I think the right way to grow. Yeah, I think you guys have artwork again that that uh, besides some of the crazy stuff you're talking about earlier uh, is distinct and uh, grabs your attention. And uh, this is I'm about to say the most cliched thing in NFTs, but like. I'm on a space right now. Someone just tried to call me, don't they? Come on. Um all right, guys, I don't know. Do you want to take an, uh, we should probably wrap this up. I, I think I, I've shared too much information about me and my, you know, bodily fluids and all these different things. And we probably need to wrap this up here, but shout out to everyone who joined. Uh, thank you so, so much to crash test Joyride. Um, anyone else want to pop any, anyone else who's on the speakers here? Anyone else want to, uh, I, I especially want to thank Pierre. Um, again, go, go check out his Twitter. Uh, we're trying to get him to 10 K on Twitter. Do we, let's see, do we get him to 9,000 on here? Come on. We're not even close to ninth. All right. We're going to work on that, but, uh, go check out his open C link. Uh, shout out to my guy sesh. I think we'll probably get you on here just in a more formal capacity next time. 13th. Thanks for hanging out, bro. Appreciate it. DL, you're the goat, uh, permanent. Appreciate it. DeFi. Thanks for leaking all the alpha. Uh, hope you don't get in trouble for that. Um, and yeah, I'm going to sign off. Pierre, do you want to say anything before we, before we bounce? I think Pierre is probably in, like, he's probably in like traffic right now or something. There's probably like loud horns or what's up. Yeah. He, he's getting rugged. All right. I'm going to sign off again. I'm going to try to post by an Apple music. So we have a record of this or maybe I won't, maybe I won't because I embarrass myself too much, but I'm going to sign off with my outro gang gang to my cats. Thanks everyone gang, for gang. your time. Peace y'all. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Of course. My Peace pleasure. Us. Gang gang to my cats. Sub to all my ducks. It's your boy, the Americans.